Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Yeah, breaking out of bite-sized pieces today. That's some pretty interesting stuff. First up, Chili's is on a massive tear. And if you don't know what Chili's is, we're going to delve into what exactly this project is, what is going on, and why it increased in almost 100% in only a 24-hour time frame. So we'll take a look at that positive news on top of some what I would consider a little negative as uh, there's an article out which states that Ethereum miners are plotting a 51% collusion, not an attack, a collusion over the EIP 1559 proposal. So we'll take a look at those two stories, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So uh, as you can tell, still in Houston for the uh, investment property, just found a couple of uh, water leaks. So <laughs> we will be here for a couple more days as we sort this whole thing out. But uh, that's okay, because what are you gonna do? Uh, today it is uh, 12th of March, it is uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Houston, Texas time. And here is what we got and what is going on. So with the market itself, uh, of course, there's always gonna be a little bit of a pullback and that uh, is kind of what is going on right here. So Bitcoin is at 56,000. Shout out to my friend George, who really did not nail it yesterday, where he said that, hey, Bitcoin is gonna go down to like 54, 55, and it's gonna rock it up to 58. And sure enough, he was right, amazing. Uh, wherever he gets the information, I have no idea. But uh, it looks uh, pretty legit. And here we are back down as people are taking profits uh, down to 56.7. Because remember, what goes up will eventually come down. And uh, there's only so many people who can keep buying and buying and buying. There's any people around the corner who always just want to take a little piece of the pie and take some uh, rewards. Uh, Ethereum down a little bit, 1746, maybe on news, who knows? Binance Coin is down 10%. And uh, Binance Coin was on a tear. Uh, you, again, you can't go up forever, but a price of 259, where it was just laggard uh, around 70 or 80 bucks, not more than a month and a half ago. So uh, we will take it, you know? Uh, Cardano, everything's down. Litecoin's up a little bit. Uh, Privacy Coin, uh, Mimblewimble, all that great stuff. But here's the big story right here, if you can see that. Uh, that is Chili's, now number 21. Chili's, uh, not a place for baby back ribs, but a place where sports fans, mostly soccer fans, can interact with their favorite teams and really be a part of something great. And when we had covered this months and months ago, and it looked like a pretty good project, didn't really think too much of it because I thought there was a lot of uh, groundwork to do. And it looks like they have done that groundwork. So actually, let's take a look at what is going on. First of all, I just want to I just want to uh, uh, suffice my inner trader and see what is the next big thing. Refinance, uh, if you look at the projected range for uh, sentiment analysis, could go up 13%, but probably about 5% in the next hour. Chili's will keep going up, maybe up to 17%, but 3% is a 90% accuracy with trade the chain. Stacks, near, and dent all running at the top five. So if you uh, want to look into something like that, take a look at Trade the Chains, link in the description. But uh, let's move on to our first piece. So that's amazing. First of all, let me, let me make this so you can see it. That's an amazing chart. That uh, is just something that's just going straight up. And uh, here we are to, and this is just for March. Just for March, for what is going on with Chili's. Look at that, just amazing. So. First of all, what the heck happened? Why did this go up so much? Well, first of all, you have to take a look at uh, what Chili's is. Uh, this is not a good one. Chili's really, I wish I could play this video for you, but I'm gonna, just gonna summarize what it is. So Chili's is pretty cool because on its platform, the Chili's platform or the Chili's uh, blockchain, what it does is it allows these teams, mostly soccer teams, here in America, I'm not big into soccer. I just, just am not. But I know everybody else who watches this channel is probably big into soccer, and that's great. Just not big into it. You know, what are you going to do? So uh, with soccer, that is like the biggest sport on the planet. I think it's something like one out of every two people is a, <laughs> is a soccer fan. So you, you can imagine uh, how great this would actually be if you're a soccer fan and you are uh, whatever great club team that there is out there, uh, they say, hey, you know what? We want you guys who are our fans to interact with us in some way, shape, or form. We're going to put out a million of our club team tokens, which is going to be based on the Chili's platform. You can buy that up, and you can vote on the different things that we want to do, like you know, for our schedule, 
or for our team roster or for our team uh, uniforms or any kind of changes that we're going to do or the different types of nights. Imagine being a super fan as far as like soccer and then going, hey, you know what? Uh, I want to vote on these new projects that you guys are going to do because I want to have my voice heard. Let's just say, and that's just soccer. Now let's go into basketball. Let's go into UFC, which they have a partnership with. Let's go into the NFL for Americans, at baseball, any other sport, esports that you can potentially think of. And that is why this is going to be a pretty, pretty big thing. Now, here, here's, a, here's the question that I had, which was, well, what is it that is a beyond the team? And first of all, why did it pop off today? Because this has been around for quite some time. So um, let's take a look, shall we? So first of all, the reason why it popped off today is because Binance had a nice little listing and they said, hey, we're going to do uh, new Chili's trading pairs. Once you get a trading pair, it's just much easier to get into these projects. So now it's Chili's BUSD, Chili's Euro, and then uh, uh, GBP, uh, the British pound. So that is pretty, uh, makes it very simple for people to buy. And when people find it on Binance, which is really uh, the biggest exchange globally, um, then th there's no reason, there's no barriers to entry. And of course, uh, Chili's also says up here, hey, just so you know, uh, you can find us on uh, Uniswap. You can use Uniswap if you want to pay a boatload of, uh, of uh, fees, <laughs> or you can just go to Binance and pay like next to nothing and get Chili's. So uh, if you're an American, that's where you're going to get Chili's, just so you know. But that is the first part. So th the interesting thing to me is not just the prospect of you know sports teams, people being engaged with them, people getting into Chili's. Um, my question is, well, who's the team? And if you take a look at uh, chilies.com, and you have to kind of look for it, actually, uh, which is forward slash en, forward slash our team. I'll link that in the description. You're going to see who all, the, all these people are. So the first one I'm always going to look at is the CEO. Well, who is this guy? And if you click on uh, uh, Alexandre uh, Dreyfus or Alejandre Dreyfus, I don't know how you say his name, probably nailed it. Uh, if you take a look at him, he has a, a pretty extensive background into everything that has to do with like poker, uh, sports, esports, well not esports, gambling, that type of thing. And mostly it's been really focused on Chili's and uh, this one called Socios. Socios is the platform that all of these um, uh, sports figures go on to or sports teams go on to and that's how you interact and so on and so forth. So see, he was the CNO, CEO and owner of Chili Gaming. It was uh, Chili Poker. Six-year-old company based in Malta. Malta, a great place to incorporate if you don't want to pay taxes. Co-founder and director of uh, Winamax, um, first French online poker room and sports betting website. So uh, this gentleman has a pretty good idea of uh, as far as like gambling and getting people involved into the gamification of uh, what is going on. So with that one, okay, I, I got that one. And then we can take a look at uh, uh, Emma here and, and Max Rabinovich, I think I nailed that one too. And they've all got some pretty decent uh, backgrounds. But as you scroll down and you take a look at, well, who's on the advisory board? Because it's great to have a good team, but sometimes just a decent team is really what you need if you have somebody who is in your corner who can say, hey, do this, this, and this. It's like if, if I had Jeff Bezos on speed dial and I'd say, Jeff, how do I make sure that my Amazon FBA business grows in the right way? Well, Rob, you need to do X, Y, and Z and do this today and then do this next week and in three months. I don't need anybody else. I don't have to be a genius. Hence, I'm not. I don't have to have a great team behind me. I just need that guy. So in, in some regards, um, if you're just kind of like decent, but you got a pretty good uh, advisory board or people who are funding the whole project, <laughs> usually it works out pretty well. So uh, this one, Mickey Kim, director of Google, one of the directors uh, at Google. Uh, Gilram, Bet 365, Gaming Sales, who else we have? Um, Thomas Winter, VP Golden Nuggets, French Tech, Quantum Economics. Oh, Maddie Greenspan. Maddie from eToro, uh, sure. Nothing about, about Maddie, I just don't like eToro. Just don't, sorry. And uh, experts, but then here's the big ones. So you've got some deep pockets here. Cyan Ventures, Venture Capital. Xavier Neal, uh, telecommunications, but see the cornerstone investors, Binance, and venture capital. So it's real great when you have some people around you who can tell you what to do or just tell you, just give you some good advice. 
but it's even better when you have some deep pockets, especially when you have Binance in your corner. And what can Binance do for you? Well, they can, you know, just do little listings here and there. And not that I'm saying that there's any kickback, something like that. Don't sue me, bro. I just, that's not the thing I'm talking about. I'm just saying it's good to have the people in your corner. So this is what Chili's is. Uh, I have not invested into it. I will look deeply into it. It's not my time now because it's just went up 100%. You'd be crazy to get into it right now as it pops off. Uh, for me personally, I will wait till there is some bad news or people just chill the F out and then I, uh, it can drop a little bit and I can maybe get uh, my position. Again, I'll have to do a lot more research before I really get into it. Uh, but that is the reason why Chili's has gone up. So let me know what you're in the comments section uh, about Chili's. Let's move on to our next piece. So this, this concerns me. And uh, I don't know if it's, it's going to actually happen, if it's going to be a show of force or just a way to, uh, to, to reconcile uh, or just, you know, to see who's got the bigger one. <laughs> but this is what's going on in the Ethereum game. So this was a, a tweet, and uh, I had actually reposted it. But uh, Ethereum miners are plotting a 51% collusion, not an attack, a collusion, just so you know. So let's break this down real quick. There was a great article uh, on Voyager's uh, blog post, and it talks about the new upgrade, and they're talking about the EIP-1559, which is going to be uh, coming out. Well, it's already been, been uh, approved, but it's not going to go into effect a little later. But here's what's going on. Ethereum's recent proposed upgrade, uh, 1559, is set to launch in July. So even though it's been approved, they got to launch it, right? It brings about some exciting changes to the smart contract platform. Yes, quite exciting. And let's see if it all works out. The proposal also addresses a significant issue with the Ethereum network right now. But you can guess what this is. Miners bid gas fees, which are what power transactions are the highest bidder. But a recent surge in demand has raised gas prices, which we have totally seen on different places like Uniswap and all the different uh, DEXs where you try to use Ethereum. And you're like, wow, that is super expensive. I don't want to ever do that again. But EIP-1559 would set a fixed gas fee for miners, which would level set the cost of transactions across the market, standardize rewards for miners, and reduce the volatility of the fees themselves. So that's great. That sounds like a great, fantastic move for everybody, except for one group, the miners. And I'm not going to talk bad about them because I don't really have their side of the story, but we'll get into it a little bit. But I mean, there's got to be another side to this because yeah, we're all spending a bunch of money and it's really hurting Ethereum, let's just be honest. If it wasn't for those for those gas fees and, and, and the uh, throughput transactions per second, I mean, Ethereum would be blowing everything away. It just would. That is what is hindering them right now. It's not like they don't have a ton of developers on there. It's not like they don't have some, some great people behind it. It's not like they don't have the history. It's those damn fees are crazy. So that is a problem. Anyhow, while this would create consistent rewards for ETH miners, it has the potential to significantly cut into their profit model for powering the network by nearly 50%. Look, if someone comes to me and says, hey, Rob, you're doing a great job, uh, but uh, we're just paying you way too much. So we're going to cut your salary in half. But we want you to keep doing the same thing, but you're only going to make 50%. How's that sound? Sounds great, boss. Let's just do that. You got your mind. So... I mean, if you look at it in, in one way, that could really hurt the, it could really help the actual overall uh, market. And if you're a miner, like, okay, well, I'll play ball because this is just going to grow and we're going to grow with this. Or on the other side, you'd be like, you know what? I don't like this whole thing because everything was going smooth until you guys came in. I mean, I'm making great money. Again, I don't have the miner side to it. I'm sure if, if you're a miner, let me know, but uh, it's just how I see it. And uh, of course, I could be wrong. So, What's going on here? So while this would create consistent rewards for ETH miners, uh, 50%, okay, they will be staging a digital protest of sorts on April 1st. So that's when it all comes down to, April 1st. So, I mean, we're halfway there. We're all the way, almost through, uh, halfway through March. So April 1st is the big day. April Fool's Day. <laughs> Hopefully it's a, it's a joke, but I don't think it is. By sending their hash power, to an opposition pool with the hope of vetoing this improvement proposal. This Ethereum proposal also has offer, offer scalability features built into it, which could multiply the transaction capacity of Ethereum 10x while reducing fees. Again, this sounds fantastic. I don't know the problem. 
the problem is, is that these miners are like, hey, we don't want to do this. So let's take a look at what and how the miners are going to uh, react to what is going on. And this was uh, uh, the article that is on my Twitter feed. You just click on there and you'll go right to this article. So this is uh, Michael Carter right here. And he's got a YouTube channel called Bits Be Trippin'. I've not checked it out. I probably will uh, see what it's all about. Sounds like an interesting guy. But the, there's some rumors that some miners plan to concentrate 51% of the hash rate on Ether mine, which is the second biggest Ether mine mining pool, which has vocally come out against the now approved 1559. So pretty big pool is like saying, nope, we're not going to do this. This is what Carter says. There is a call to arms, forest projection taking place on April 1st of many home and mid-sized miners moving hash rate over to ethermine.org for 51 hours, so not the whole thing, but just a big chunk of time, uh, to show a coordinated move of hash power that has been dismissed by the Ethereum core developers as their efforts to pay as little as possible to secure Ethereum's network is well within the risk boundary on making changes to monetary fee structure for Ethereum. So what they're saying is like, look, if you would do it this way, you are screwing around with the actual security of the network. And we can't secure the network if you do these things, if you level out these transactions. We need these transactions high. Okay, so there is that part. He says that the developers and the investors and the DAP developers are detached. Not surprising, especially as an emerging business and uh, asset starts to, starts to uh, grow and develop, you're going to have growing pains. And this is a big one. So to finish up, these influencer miners, we'll call them, are similarly planning to facilitate a potential 51% attack of Ethereum as a show of force with the aim of demanding a compromise, which entails either kicking out some other miners, the ASICs miners, or inflating Ethereum by increasing the block reward. Numerous miners online have vocally opposed the above, and the rest is just opinion pieces, but that is essentially what is going on. So there's a couple things to remember here. EIP 1559 is going to, it was approved, but it won't take effect uh, until a little bit later. Uh, this whole thing with uh, miners over Ethermine, the second largest pool, is going to happen on April 1st for 51 hours as a show of, not like a retaliation or attack, but just as a vocalization of their concerns about what is going on. And then they can uh, hopefully bring everyone to the table. I don't know. Uh, how this is going to work. I don't think this is going to be like a hard fork. Where you're going to have Ethereum and Ethereum newbie or like Ethereum, Ethereum classic back in the day. But uh, it is a concerning thing. And uh, just look for <laughs> the volatility of Ethereum to go to the roof around that day or the day before, or maybe even the day after. Because remember, it's going to last for 51 hours. So we're looking at two days. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section about this one. This could be potentially very bad for Ethereum, or uh, it could be a catalyst for extreme growth. That's the only way things get better. All right, so that is it for today. So hey, if you made it all the way to the end, I wanna say thanks for sticking with me, I appreciate it. If you liked the video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, that helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing, a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, especially the story like that. And uh, also, I'm gonna put two more videos in the left and right, so you can check out uh, some of our top stories. Uh, check those out at your leisure. All right, so thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.